What is going on, my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? It's been a hot minute. I have been sick as hell. I'm still a little bit. Um, I may have to kind of like clear my throat, maybe cough a little bit, take a second to uh, drink some Wator because my throat has been fucked up. That's why I haven't done anything. Um, I've wanted to, and I tried to, but I've been sick since last Tuesday, and you know, slowly getting better, but then I had a really long work weekend, and that kind of set me back a bit, and so like, I'm at the very tail end of it, but still, I might there may be a couple moments, so forgive me in advance if those do indeed occur. So, getting into the nitty gritty, I had wanted to have both done this a while ago, and also have gotten into uh, actually playing matches online by now, but obviously, like I said, I was sick, and one of the parts of my being sick was that my throat was just dead it hurt like hell and if I tried to talk at all like it just it got set on fire and so obviously sitting down for an extended period of time in order to talk and you know potentially get hype and all kinds of things like that not gonna end very well for me um but so in the meantime a bunch of you have been asking me like hey man um how, what do you think about the game what do you think about this specific character? What are your plans going forward, etc., etc.? And, you know, thank you for those questions. I tried to answer them briefly, but some of those are kind of questions that, like, you can't really answer very briefly. Like, it's kind of difficult. Um, so anyway, here I am to address all of those things in one big, broad sense. One of you guys mentioned in the comments, what, what King of Cosmos, Mickey D., it's a very long name. Um, said, like, you should do a Nate Talks. I was like, I want to, but I'm dead. <laughs> but anyway, I'm here now. And um, so I'm going to kind of address, firstly, just like network mode in general, because that's what I have the least to talk about, because I haven't played it yet. But I have, I've scoped it out. I've done, I've gone on some scouting missions. Then I'm just going to talk about, you know, in the broad terms, how I feel about the game, the various modes. And then I'm going to kind of, get into the specific characters and you know kind of what my game plan is with them going forward so firstly network mode so the good thing is that they seem to have fixed the player match issue i don't even know if there's going to be anybody here it's very early in the morning for me um but yeah so you see all these rooms right now most of them look like they are actually japanese rooms or probably european rooms that's actually for this or to have some two bars this early in the morning that's actually not that bad but you see my main point here all the connections are actually popping up. That was a huge problem throughout Chrono Phantasma in that, like, for a minute after I initialized network mode, it would show me connections. And then after that, it would never show me another, oh god, the Europe connection went dead. It would never show me another connection again. It just would not goddamn happen. And so obviously that's a bad thing. Now the other thing that was really getting me was, um, I have to admit, there we go. When you come into these, and you come in here initially, I can't hide anymore, they still show my name. It shows it as four bars, it's still doing that. Now granted, it doesn't show it for people that are still fighting, but, like, it just, it always shows as four bars for a while, and then you have to sit here and just wait for them to actually kind of, um, oops, to actually settle themselves and show the real connections and stuff like that, so that's still an annoyance that's present. But I don't, I would, I don't think I'm going to use that mode very much. I might. I don't know. But just because of that, there's plenty of player match rooms going on. I don't know how many people are playing ranked, but if people are playing ranked, that would be the optimal place uh, for me to play in general if I wanted to sit down. And then so, like, I would play ranked for random videos, and then I would start up a player match room and, you know, put up something on Twitter, like, hey, man, I have a room open, come see me, that kind of thing. Um... But who knows, you know, I just, I haven't had the opportunity, but I'm just, I'm glad they fixed the player match thing where I can actually see connections going in now. I just, I haven't joined one yet, but I hope they, they also show connections that you have with each player within the room, because that was also something that was absent in Chrono Phantasma, where you would just join a room and it gives you a list of player names, shows you what color their little emblem is, but it didn't show you what your connection was. So you were just going in blind, basically. You knew what your connection was to the host of the room, but nobody else. And so, you know, when you have a lobby full of eight people, it's kind of important to know who the hell you're playing against and what the quality of that connection might be. 
and it didn't get that so hopefully maybe they fixed that but again I don't actually know so but I'm gonna be getting into that very soon hopefully you know cross my fingers that I don't relapse and die or something that would be terrible but let's talk about the game in general so first let's talk about single player I don't think there's gonna be anything worth recording like I, it's a massive bummer that unlimited Mars is gone that unlimited characters in general are gone I understand the reasoning behind it they weren't <laughs> they weren't a huge impact upon the game itself they weren't a huge selling point of the game they were just kind of like a fun diversion for people but they weren't used all that often and so you're looking at a brand new version of the game you can't just do what they did and extend and just kind of hand wave it like ah whatever the unlimited characters can just stay as they are who really cares we won't update them alongside you know the character rebalances and changes we made for extend but now there's not that excuse really wouldn't hold water for a brand new version when characters are as incredibly different as they are now and so instead of rebalancing it they just got rid of them that was the decision they made it's unfortunate because that was the only single player content that I felt that was you know like actually enjoyable to watch um, and so because of that like I, I don't think I'm gonna be like I mentioned initially I might want to record some of this Grim of the Abyss mode because like the boss some of the boss fight stuff had some pretty unique mechanics to it but I've actually beaten Grim of the Abyss mode now I haven't done all the boss fights I've gone through 18 and it's starting to get to a point now where it's just like um, so well let me just show you you can see right here that little number one high mobility and damage output that's what their main skill is and so Initially, it's kind of like, oh, all of these things kind of have unique modifiers to them. And you get, like, you know, you have a bunch of different things here. And then I think it's around, like, 10 or so. 13. Right here is where you start really noticing, like, okay, wait. I'm doing no damage. Now, this one's fine. This one has a unique mechanic to it. When you start out, you basically do zero damage per hit to Tager. You're doing nothing. And he has, like, 87,000 health or some nonsense like that. But... You can also, um, I mean, you see right there, de defense increased, but decreases per knockdown. So, you, just, you don't do full combos against him, you don't do your 27 second anime combos, you do whatever combo you have to do in order to get a knockdown, stop right there, reset the situation, get another knockdown, do that for like 20-25 seconds, then his defense is kind of around a normal area where you can kind of kill him in like four or five confirms after that and then you go nuts I like that it was unique it was you know a different approach to the match perfectly fine and then you have uh, this one massive defense ag again but it's reduced during overdrive so you set up a scenario where you can get an optimal overdrive confirm do the most amount of damage you can during it and hope that that's enough to carry you and that's what I actually did. I did just that, and then I ended it with an Astral. Then you have, so this one doesn't matter. I think this one was also, yeah. But then 16 right here, reduced movement and incoming physical damage. She doesn't take, she takes barely any damage whatsoever. I think I barely won with like five seconds left on the clock. But there's no way to reduce it. There's no way to alter it. She just barely takes damage. Then you get over here, and again, reduces incoming damage, enhanced with more damage. This particular fight... I want to say I spent 95 seconds of the round beating her ass non-stop in the corner. She never got out. I just destroyed her. She was down to about 60% health after all of that. And then, you know, just she got out, ran away for four seconds, and I lost. Because even though technically I had more health, timeouts don't work, never work in your favor. Like, you can have 100% of your health, and the opponent can have one health left. And Grim of the Abyss will count that as a loss on you. You have to KO them in order to get a win. And so, like, I didn't even get close to killing her on that one. So immediately once I got there, I was like, nah, fuck it. This isn't even fun. This isn't worth doing. And some of you mentioned, like, it basically becomes a necessity to use a skill called Deathmatch, which makes it so that any special move or distortion move has a percentage chance to instantly KO the opponent. And in a fight like that, I can see why. And if that is what lies in wait for the rest of this mode, then it's not fun. It's not interesting. And that was one of my biggest complaints in regard to survival mode in uh, Street Fighter. Is that you had this opportunity to really go just mental. Go crazy with the mechanics of your game. Make it, I mean, essentially, 
make it like another version of what was it called heroes and heralds in marvel vs capcom that was such an interesting idea unfortunately the online mode was completely wrecked by people just min maxing it and almost you kind of had to have a counter to that if you wanted to actually win and so like the really truly interesting stuff fell by the wayside and you know pretty much people only ever use like the most blatantly overpowered and boring stuff that the mode had to offer and so like if you really wanted to have fun you were kind of just stuck with trying to come up with crazy things in single player and toy around with them for a little bit and then wander off because single player fighting game stuff gets boring rather quickly um, but that was that was an opportunity to do something like that again just go nuts and they didn't do that they kept it basic the power-ups were as simple as could be and rather boring overall and so because of that the mode and obviously there were a bunch of other flaws I'm not gonna get into them I'm here to discuss Street Fighter but that was an opportunity to do that Grim of the Abyss mode is another excellent opportunity to do that and instead they just say this bitch has plus 27,962 defense. Get through that, you dumb bitch. You can't. Ha ha ha. This is fun. No. No, it isn't. Not at all. And so it's, it's another missed opportunity. It's, this is one of the reasons why it's kind of that, like, catch-22 where you have, pe you have people like me who are just sitting here saying, eh, single-player fighting game content sucks. It's not worth it. And so then developers hear that, and they're like, ah, nobody really cares all that much about single-player fighting game content, so let's not put the focus of our attention into it. Let's just do something simple and basic and call it a day. And so then, because it is simple and basic, and because it doesn't reach what it actually could be, it continues the trend of being kind of dull and uninspired and not very fun, but it could have been. It had the potential to be, but it didn't reach that because the effort wasn't put in to get it there. And that's what Grim of the Abyss mode is so far. It's, just, it's a really big disappointment. And then score attack mode is just score attack. Speed Star is just score attack in a time attack setting. That's really all that it is. So, like, there's nothing compelling about the single player content of this game overall, which is truly unfortunate because there's nothing for me to record aside for online. And, you know, obviously, I can continue doing some of those challenge mode videos. I've done a lot. No reason to come. Well, I actually do want to show up here. Is there anything else that I really wanted to talk about? How the fuck do you unlock... I don't actually know if this doesn't have anything to do with an achievement, then just ignore me. But, like, there's two... I think it's this one, right? Like, 50... Yeah, how the hell do you unlock that one? And how the shit do you unlock that one? How do you do it? I have 100% in the story mode, but those motherfuckers aren't unlocked, and I hate it. I want it. If it has nothing to do with the trophy, then I don't give a shit. I think because there's one that was... I, I think it was mistranslated... Because there's a trophy that says, open everything in glossary mode. But there is no glossary mode. There's a gallery mode, and there's a library mode. Those are the only two things I can think of that actually... Because the other ones, um, everything else, like, Replay Theater has its own uh, trophy like, section. Item Shop has its own trophy section. But gallery does not, and library does not. So it has to be one of those. But if it doesn't have to do with a library, then I don't give a shit. Because I have, I have everything in gallery mode. I just need to get, uh, oh no, never mind, okay, shit, so it can't be item shop then, my bad, I was, I meant I had everything in item shop except for this, I haven't unlocked this shit, because that's way too much P money, I ain't balling yet, I, we need to go online and beat people's asses in order to get that money, take their lunch money and buy Noel's costume, you know, it's a traditional high school thing, man, I gotta get my girl some fly clothes, show off that she's fancy and I can support her and buy her nice shit but to do so you know i'm not old enough to have a legal job i gotta beat up the kids for their lunch money man but i can't do it because i've been sick boy it's gonna happen soon they're gonna get some ass beatings man only from asriel not from tager <laughs> let's use that segue to talk about characters so let's actually talk about Tager first, because he's he's the one that I'm the most conflicted with. I still haven't like ever since that first video. I still haven't gone back and tried to finish uh, his challenge ten. But <coughs> before this game ever came out, I was very uh, very vocal about how much I hated his atomic collider changes and his uh, gadget finger changes. That hasn't changed at all. I still hate them. I still think they were stupid and ridiculous. And uh, anyway. But there's a bunch of other shit 
that, like, I wasn't really... Because to be aware of them, you kind of have to pay attention to them. I wasn't paying that close. It was kind of like I would browse through a change list. I would notice things that were incredibly blatant if I watched a match. But I wasn't paying terribly close attention, so I might not notice little nuanced differences in regard to uh, how normals function and things like that. But so, like, he lost his Gatling. He used to be able to do 6A into 3C, and then from there you would do the Atomic Collider with and, you know, continue your combo from there. He doesn't have that anymore. And so one of the biggest reasons why that is a problem is because due to how shit Atomic Collider is now, that's basically a combo ender now. You don't want to use it unless you are ending your combo. That's a little bit overgeneralized. You can confirm for, like, you can do Raw Atomic Collider into 5A, Spark Bolt, something like that. Um, but overall, 95% of the time you're going to use Atomic Collider, it's going to spell the end of your combo, which is how it's going to be. So, to compensate for that, instead of trying, instead of your main combo route being something into 2C Atomic Collider and then going further beyond that, you know, like, in Chrono Phantasma, he was able to uh, do Atomic Collider, if they were magnetized, you could land a 5D Gadget Finger with, stuff like that. Can't do that anymore. And so now, instead of that, you want to do 2C into Gadget Finger Whiff, which pulls them straight back down to Tager, and then you can confirm from that either into an A button or a 5B button. But you cannot use Gadget Finger unless they've been knocked down at some point in the combo, which for Tager essentially necessitates 3C. There are, he does have other knockdowns, but ultimately, the one that's going to be doing the majority of the work in order to get a knockdown is going to be 3C. So losing 6A into 3C means if you do, you know, like you confirm 5B, 5C, 6A, you can't do 3C anymore. Now it forces you into 2C, if, and now because they haven't been knocked down, you can't actually gadget finger with that. So you have to go into Atomic Collider and cut your combo short. And so it becomes a little bit unintuitive to play him because you can't really use the tools that you wanted to as much as you kind of, I mean there are different combo routes I don't want to say like oh well, once you hit that point it's the point of no return you can do 6a 6b uh, which forces crouching 236a and then you can link 236a uh, or you can link 5a from the a sledge and then you can do like 5a 3c atomic collider with but at that point the proration is too low for you to be able to do um, 2C Gadget Finger with after that but it's still you get a little bit of a combo extension then you pull them back in then you do Atomic Collider all that good shit. So he does have different combo routes, but they're just, they're a little unintuitive. They feel kind of awkward, and I just don't really like the feel of it. And so that's the biggest thing is, you know, like one of the, regardless of how good or bad Taker generally is, which usually he's leaning toward the bad side, unfortunately, but he's always at least been fun to play, unless you run up against like Hazuma or one of the Morocco units. In that case, it kind of sucks to be using him, but in general, he's just, he's fun to play. I haven't had that same feeling yet when playing him. I just, I, overall, he kind of feels like a net negative experience, which isn't how you should be feeling if you're trying to play a fighting game character. You want to be having fun. And that's the biggest thing so far with Tager is that I just, I haven't been having fun. And that is also kind of goes double for Bullet, except it's far worse for Bullet. Like with Tager, I can't make up my mind. I can't decide whether or not it really is truly a net negative experience and it's just kind of not worth because like wedge catapult is amazingly fun um and tager is just kind of you know magnetism fucking with people that's always been fun but you know there's just a bunch of stuff that makes him a lot less fun that wasn't present before so i gotta you know kind of weigh and balance those factors and decide come to a conclusion about whether or not i really want to stick with him with bullet cut and dry they fuck this character over She's just, she isn't fun to play at all anymore. She has, like, I don't think she's ruined. A lot of people are spelling, like, doomsday prophecies in regard to this character. I don't think it's that bad, but she's just not fun to play anymore. She's still somewhat capable. She still has the tools to fuck you up, but they're less effective than they ever have been, and she's never been a good character in the first place, so that's kind of why. It's kind of like, she's not... A terrible character that can never win anything but the amount of work you have to put in in order to get anywhere with her is ridiculous and they made it even worse in this version is just because like her 5d so her 5d has a massive range to it now but it doesn't combo from anything like you cannot land it off of you know it doesn't link from 5c anymore it doesn't link from anything anymore because it has such an 
incredible startup that nothing has enough hit stun to be able to combo into it. And so because of that, like, you have to be going through all these weird, awkward routes in order to force somebody into a state where you can then get them airborne and land a JD or something like that. It's just, it sucks. It's not fun. She's just, they made her so awkward to play that they removed everything that was even slightly enjoyable about her in the first place. So that character is completely off the radar. She's done never using her again who else s i've actually i mean you've seen i've done some of them like her challenges are actually really easy so far but i just i was doing them i was kind of going through and looking at all the characters i was interested in i was like all right let me just do everybody's normal combos and then make a decision from there and move forward um i really i, I like s but she's also kind of on the low end of characters that i like like i'm not gonna be picking her up immediately and trying her out it's just i like her play style she has a gigantic ass sword she beats the shit out of people with it I'll try her out, but she seems fairly limited overall, I, I'm not sure how good she actually is, and I'm not sure how fun she actually is in practice. And obviously that's the most important factor, is whether or not I'm having fun with her, and I don't know if that's there yet. So is there anybody in this entire, nobody in this row that we care about? Naoto. So you see, I've actually done, so I, I'm gonna actually look at this dude's challenges, because I want to show you the difference in what I deem acceptable execution barriers and unacceptable execution barriers obviously you if you have not seen the video where i just highlight like what the fuck are you expecting me to do with this character you nut jobs please see it so you can understand the basis of what i'm going through but basically you can charge all of his d moves but you can also dash cancel all of his d moves and so that is actually the basis of a lot of his combos is that you land something then you charge a d move and immediately dash cancel it and the reason why you see right there, Banishing Fang Enhancer. If you dash before doing these Banishing Fangs, it gets these little blue outlines behind him and increases the potency of the moves. You get additional effects. Uh, I think you get additional damage as well. But anyway, so you just you get additional stuff, and then it also allows you... Well, actually, it won't work right now. Well, I can just do... Does it... Oh, uh, no, that won't work. Wait, no, I'm doing the wrong move. No, it doesn't last long enough. That's a bummer. Um, but so you get additional effects, and then you can also dash cancel the enhanced versions of them at the end, which allows, I mean, as you can see, it allows you to continue the combo after that. Um, but the problem is that, like, just well, let me turn on the inputs real I think this, nope, nope, that wasn't it. This is it. Let me just restart that real quick. So watch, I don't, don't watch Naoto. Don't watch anything else. Watch the little stick in the middle. And watch how fast the inputs have to be on the dash cancel stuff. Right there. Like, did you even see it? I had to watch this twice in order to actually even see what they try. Actually, no, I didn't even watch it. I had to look at the inputs on the side to see exactly what they had done. Now, let me show you the next one. Before I show you this, I want you to read this. During all types of D charging, dash cancel. This is 214A. 214A, remember that. that. This is not a D move. This is 214A. Watch. That right there was a dash cancel. 214A. You can actually dash cancel that. Well, maybe. Very slowly. <coughs> That's actually what every. Now that I know what to look for. I've actually only seen two Naotos uh, playing at a high level. Manami and A92. Both of them use this to do it. They dash cancel or they dash cancel that shit and then they go from there. But again, now now that you saw that, watch how fast the fucking input has to be. That's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's insane. Now I wanna say it's trial nine, maybe? Nope. Yep. Trial 8. Challenge 8. Well, let me just, I'm not even going to bother trying to do it. Just watch. You still have to do the dash cancel. You still have to do... Um, you still have to prove that like you practice this. You've developed execution required. But it's not within like a .01 second fucking execution window. It's ridiculous. How fast they expect you to do these. Like, you can actually see. Like, 
Like, I'm not even trying to do a cancel into this shit. And that's not fast enough. That is nowhere near fast enough to ever actually get the combos. And so, like, that one right there, you're pretty much doing the traditional dash cancel. You still have to have the execution necessary to be able to do whatever move required, you know, like, to either do 2D into a dash cancel or a 6D into a dash cancel or 2 one 4 a into a dash cancel. And then you saw the link from that. But again, it doesn't require, like, this split-second timing that requires you to be on the edge of your seat and in perfect uh, condition the entire time. And I mentioned this when I was talking about Guilty Gear, about how I just could not conceive about playing Chip casually. Because you have to be so, you just have to be so perfect whenever you're playing him, or everything goes to shit. And it's the same thing with Naoto. And it's like, I love the look of this character. I love his moves. I love his combos. His execution is bullshit. It's nonsense how they designed this character. And that was, that's just... I'm not going to give up on him completely. Like, maybe there's some fucking, maybe there's something I can develop eventually if I sit down and practice with this dude for a little bit. But I very highly, highly doubt it. And so because of that, even though... Like, he's number one on the list of all the new characters that I want to play the most. That barrier right there is just going to ensure that it probably doesn't happen. Susanu, I am very interested in, and I need to actually play him. I need to work on playing him, develop some muscle memory, etc., etc. You can, you've seen the video. I did all these challenges. Um, I am interested. Now, there are a lot of people who are like, Oh, this character sucks. I never believe that. I don't for... Never believe people. Who declare a character sucks or a character is overpowered within uh, not even the first week within like the first two months don't even believe them probably don't even believe them afterwards because most people are bad at fighting games that's why you'll almost never hear me say like oh man this character is completely fucking broken is ridiculous like I don't even think I said that about Kokonoe who was so obviously blatantly overpowered that anybody with a brain could tell. I still don't think I ever even said until like everybody had come to a consensus like, oh yeah, this character's bullshit and she's ruining the game. We should probably ban her. <laughs> Once it got there, it was like, all right, yeah, she's pretty fucking broken. But I never state that definitively, or at least I don't think I do. Maybe I have before. Um, and the reason why is because most people are just, they're just bad. Like, it, the easiest way is to go back, again, I know a lot of people hate Street Fighter, but it's such an easy thing to point to. During the closed beta, or not the closed beta, it's during the beta periods, Nash was insane. Fucking ridiculous character. I mean, obviously he's still incredibly good, but he was, like, the clear front runner for best character in the game during his beta period. And so the next time he rolled around, people noticed he'd been balanced, he'd been toned down. Everybody and their mother said that Nash was ruined, he was the worst character in the game, he sucked now, he was never gonna get anywhere. Look where he is now. Ken. Everybody said he sucked, nobody was gonna use him, nobody was ever gonna win with him, nobody was gonna get anywhere with him, he was just a bad character. Look where he is now. Cammy. Limited, no mix-up, she sucks, she's boring, she's never gonna get anywhere. Look where she is now. And so, like, don't believe anybody. Like I said, I've seen a ton of people be like, no, Susano is the worst character in the game, man. Don't even bother with him. Don't listen to those people. Fuck those people. Find out for yourself. Make a conclusion yourself. Do not listen to people, especially random people, who have never even proven themselves as good fighting game players in the first place, dictate which characters you pick. Especially because, so, like, one of the biggest things that you have to keep in mind if you plan to go out into the big wide world of tournaments and you want to go in EVO, you want to go to Arc Revolution and beat all the Japanese players, you don't want to be picking a character like Kagura. He's not going to do it for you. <laughs> He's not going to bring home the big bucks. If you're aspiring for those lofty heights, then you need to worry about how good your character is. If you want to chill, play with some friends, play online, play against randoms, pick whoever the hell you want to. Because I guarantee you, nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, 99% of people that you will run into online are not playing at a high enough level 
that having a debilitating character choice is actually going to be debilitating for you. You can always outplay them. Always. 100% of the time. Never doubt that. And that's one thing you should always understand is like, if you lose, it may have been a matchup problem. Maybe it was lag. Maybe the other person was just playing better than you. There's all kinds of factors, but you can get past every single one of those factors with more practice. That's really all it is. Like, if you look at it basically as kind of like, I lost, largely because this person has invested a hell of a lot more time into this game than I have, and you understand that, and you understand that if you do want to surpass that person, then you need to invest more time yourself to get to that level, you're in a good spot. You don't need to worry about whether or not your character is S tier or F tier. You gotta worry about how much time you're putting in to mastering that character and becoming the best. That's what you gotta care about. Again, unless you wanna go out and win EVO. In which case, fuck that low tier character, pick 9. <laughs> That's my advice if you wanna go win EVO. Maybe Izanami, but 9's a hell of a lot easier to use. That's a perfect time to transition into 9. You see I've actually done some of her challenges. Ridiculously easy character to use. Holy shit, I had no idea. All of her pokes are like half screen range. She just destroys you with like no thought whatsoever. You press whatever buttons you want, it just ends up working. Fuck it. This character's insane. And like I legitimately made up my mind that like if I was getting my ass beat, if I just if I couldn't do it, I couldn't bring it home, I was going on like 50 game losing streaks, I would give it all up, I'd stop playing Tager, Azrael, Hakuman, Susano, whoever I was picking, I would give them all up, and I'd pick 9. Because at that point, I'd be unstoppable. I don't know if she's the best character in the game, I don't know, like I, like I mentioned, I am never going to definitively say a character is broken, a character is OP, they're too good, they're the best, etc, etc, but I can definitively tell you, Nine is a goddamn good character for not a lot of effort. But I won't use her. Because, well, I, yeah. I actually did kind of have fun. <laughs> like, I'll freely admit that. She's actually a fun character to play. Um, but, again, she's kind of just like... I've never really gone for the magical type characters. And so, like... Even though I, I do think she was actually fun to play, I wouldn't list her as, like... A top contender for somebody to actually sit down and learn and get better with her is Anami though I was actually interested in because her they kind of showed her um, to be like this really really strong and somewhat unique style of rushdown and that really appealed to me but uh, as you can see I went through her normal trials she's very awkward to use like not in a bad way you know I kind of I use awkward in the same fashion as I say bullet was awkward, but I mean them in a different way. Izanami just kind of requires a different set of execution. It's like when you look at Carl, right? I mean, obviously Carl, everybody knows that character's hard as hell to play. But one of the biggest hurdles when you're learning Carl is to get used to holding the button down and then doing the motion when you're trying to control the doll, or just, you know, controlling the doll in general while you're also trying to control Carl. It requires something different something unique to your execution that nobody else really does so you kind of have to learn it's like this is not quite this big but like trying to go from a charge character to a motion character or vice versa it just requires a different method of execution that you have to get used to that you have to get acclimated to before you can actually truly start playing the character and it's kind of the same thing with izanami she just she does something very different and i like that but uh, I'm not sure how much I actually, I, if I like it enough to actually sit down and learn her. But she, I mean, she, again, she's another character. Seems absolutely incredible. If you're looking for the two best new characters, I don't know where Mai is. Everybody's saying Mai's overpowered. She needs to get nerfed. I don't fucking know. I haven't used her. I haven't even watched anything about her. Uh, so I don't know where she stands. But in terms of all the characters that I have, out of S, uh, Naoto, Susano, Hibiki, Izanami, and Nine. Izanami and Nine are clearly the best. There's no question about that. Uh, where Izanami and Nine themselves fall in, in terms of you know how they good they are comparatively, I don't know. But they're definitely the two best out of these six. So, the last one, Habiki. 
As you can see, I've done almost all of them. What were the ones that I haven't done? Oh, uh, no. Well, you know what? Fuck it. Let's show some stuff. What have I not done? Can you actually pick stylish mode? <laughs> How could you? That wouldn't even work. <coughs> I'm kind of curious. What the uh, challenges I have not done. Oh, that's right. So I don't think... Yeah, I haven't even tried this combo, actually. So that's one of the biggest things is that, like... So in regard to Hibiki, he's actually not difficult to use at all. Like, I actually think he has... Out of everybody's challenges that I have done, S, Susano, and Hibiki are probably the three easiest. Nine was... Again, I was actually very surprised how easy Nine was, but I can't say, like, oh, yeah, she had the easiest as well because I haven't done her expert combos. I haven't even seen her expert combos. But not, I mean, up to where I got with nine, she was very easy. What's this one? Oh, why haven't I done this one? This is mad easy. Wait. Yeah, why haven't I done this one? This was really easy. Anyway, so, like, Habiki's really easy to do. Like, he doesn't have anything really difficult about his stuff. Oops. But it just, I mean, as you see, like, he just requires a ton of button presses. Is he has very long combos, a lot of uh, different direction presses and stuff in there. So, you know, it's kind of... Requires at least a little bit of developed muscle memory to just kind of go through all that shit. So who else do we want to look at? I mean, oh, I didn't even really talk about Habiki. One of the biggest things that I don't really like about him is that... In most scenarios, you don't really even get to use like 90% of his moveset. Which really is kind of, it's just kind of disappointing overall. Like, unless you get a specific type of hit confirmer, if you're in the corner, you just don't really get to do much with him. And that gets, that's really disappointing overall to me. And he kind of seems a little bit too basic. I mentioned that before in regard to certain characters where it's kind of like, I think I would enjoy playing them. I think I would have fun for like a week or two. But then it would just kind of get... A little bit rote, kind of flowcharty, like you don't really have many options to mix up what you're doing, and so you're just kind of doing the same thing over, you're kind of going through the motions, rather than still kind of like just doing whatever, that's one of the biggest things that I like about Tager, is that you can do like almost anything with the character and all of the tools available to him, he's not limited just kind of like one set style of play, whereas I kind of feel like Habiki more or less is. And so I feel, again, I, I think he's a really good character. I don't think he's, like, amazing. But he's a very good character. He's just very basic on top of that. And that basic can get boring quite quickly. So, Azrael. I mean, what can I really say about him? He's still, he's almost the same character. He's gotten a little bit better. He's still fantastic. He's still the front runner for characters I want to play. I'm having a hell of a lot of fun with him. And I'm definitely, like, when I... Like I mentioned, I want to sit down in network mode and actually start playing soon. He's going to be the character that I'm going to pick initially. Like, I I have never not loved playing this character, and I still love playing this character. Hakumen. Have I tried to even do these? I don't think I've... Oh, wait, no, it's because... It must be... Because I haven't gotten through hard 10. Yeah! What was hard 10? Oh, wait, was this the one? No, this isn't the counter one. Was it? No, it's not the counter one, because the counter one doesn't start mid-screen. What's this? Oh, because it requires the instant air dash. That's not even that hard. What am I doing? Oh, you know what it actually was? It's because for a little while... Oh, what am I doing? I couldn't do that, Link. I could not do... I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm so slow right now. What am I even doing? Jesus. I couldn't do that link. I, for whatever reason, I just couldn't do it. But now I've played him a little bit in various uh, single player places. I've done things with him. I've experienced him. And I mean, I'm fucking it all up now. Which is super awkward. Why am I fucking that up? Why am I fucking this up now? I'm on candid camera, help me out, shit! 
for a while I just couldn't do that. Like it just it wasn't working out for me. So I just saw that it needed that and I was like, ah fuck it, whatever. But yeah, that's not hard at all. I'm having fun with Hawkman. He's a really he's I mentioned this, you know, when I was kind of just watching videos of him and looking at his differences. They made him a lot better to play, I think. A lot more um it was a lot more enjoyable and it kind of made it so that like every move he has is useful in its own fashion, which is obviously a fantastic thing to have. Uh, was there anybody? Taukaka, a little bit. They made Taukaka, apparently, I mean, from what I can see, they made her a hell of a lot easier to play. I didn't go through much because she required this really weird link that I just could not get to actually hit. Uh, it required a J2D, but, I mean, I just, I did that for like 10 minutes. I was like, ah, alright, let me bail, let me do something else. Um, but she's another, she's the character, like I've always mentioned, like I would like to learn Taukaka, and if there's any one version of her that's going to be the easiest to learn it's going to be this one valkenheim too i love me some valks but nobody even, just kind of, it just kind of occurred to me nobody really uses him anymore at all like period they just he was massively overpowered in his first initial incarnation because he just did so much damage at the drop of a hat uh when he was a dlc character and then he's just kind of been slightly nerfed in every single version since then anybody there's not really anybody else makoto a little bit they made her they did make it easier to get uh her they kind of made the window to get her level three drives wider so it's easier to use that so you know maybe i'll play that character too but again like that's how many characters did i just mentioned potentially tager s i need to sit down with naoto more maybe habiki hakuman azrael Let's just throw nine in there, because like I said, I actually did kind of enjoy... I wasn't expecting it, but I did kind of enjoy using her. So that's eight characters right there. I can't even remember if I said Taukaka or not. I know I didn't say Valkenheim, but let's just say, like, there's about ten other characters as well on top of that. Like, there's a big mess of shit that I would like to get into and start messing around with, and Makoto's definitely not very high on that list. So there's always those characters that it's like, oh yeah, I, I totally do want to learn them. But, <laughs> um, so we'll see how it goes. I have rambled on long enough. Hopefully that answered any of your lingering questions that you had in regards, you know, kind of where I'm, where my head's at with the game and stuff like that. And I do, like I said, I, I would have really liked to have been able to play some online matches and have posted those by now, but I'm not sure how much it reflects in like how you hear my voice, but I can kind of, obviously I feel the fact that I still have the lingering effects of uh, sickness, but, and I don't know if that comes across in how you hear me, but, like right now, I, I've been talking for 43 minutes and my throat's already just like, yeah, you're at your limit, stop, end this, and move on, which I very much plan to do, so, thank you for listening, if you do have any further questions, I will certainly be happy to reply to them, if I can in a limited manner, if not, then I guess you will have provoked another Nate Talks, eventually, so thank you for listening, and I will see you all next time, peace!